Greg, I like to try to do the impossible and imagine what it is like to be God hmm. so that we can try to make progress and try to understand. Can God change? Can God change his mind? A lot of tradition says this is absolutely right, impossible. Right, right. Yeah, the, uh, the dominant tradition, uh, Judeo-Christian tradition, is that God is immutable. And that means that God doesn't in any respect change. The logic comes not really so much from the, the scripture, uh, because you don't find that in, in, in the scripture. You find it in Plato. Uh, Plato reasoned like this, uh, that... Uh, something can change either for the better or for the worse, but a perfect being can't be improved upon so it can't change for the better and a perfect being can't be worsened so it can't change for the worse. Therefore, a perfect being must be completely unchanging. Um, I think the argument is, is, is misguided. Uh, a perfect being, I would argue, uh, can't change in any respect in which it would be imperfect to change. But there's a lot of ways that one could change what that that would uh, be a manifestation of your perfect character. For example, uh, let's suppose, uh, you, you like to imagine the impossible, so this will really challenge you. Imagine that I'm a perfect human being, and uh, I come into this room here, and I'm as happy as can be, and uh, I see that you are crying. You're sitting in this chair, and you're crying. Now, if I were to continue on in my perfectly happy disposition, um, I'd be unchanging, but that wouldn't be a, a sign of my perfection. Rather, it'd be a sign that I'm, I'm insensitive. If, in fact, I'm a perfect human being, I will change precisely because I'm perfect. I will adjust my demeanor to now begin to enter into your world and feel your pain and, and you know, and try to help you. So also, if God is a personal being, God would be unchanging in terms of God's perfect character. God's always as loving and as wise as, 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 as possible. But precisely because God is unchanging in terms of God's character, I would argue that God is perfectly changing in terms of God's interaction with the world. Um, there's a give and take, an ebb and flow in our relationship with God. We impact God and God impacts us. Uh, there's a genuine relationship there. If God was immutable, I don't know how God could ever have a real interpersonal uh, relationship with us. And that it couldn't affect God. And you'd also say that would mean that God is not what they say impassable. God can be affected by what happens external to God. Impassibility was, was part and parcel with the immutable doctrine. If God can't change at all, then God obviously never has fluctuating emotions, never you know, is, is uh, you know, impacted, is sorrowful over what happens or, or anything of the sort. Despite the fact that the Bible always is, describes God as getting angry yeah. and then you know, crying, having sorrow, and, and being frustrated and, and changing his mind. Now let's talk about changing well, let's, his let's mind because that. that is certainly at least what the biblical scriptures, Old and New Testament, seem to indicate, mm -hmm. that God thinks one way and then thinks another way. You find, uh, I, I've counted 39 times in the Old Testament uh, ex where it explicitly says God changes his mind, and there's over 200 that I know of where it's in the narrative, where God has at some point said, I'm, I'm going to do this, but in the light of changing circumstances, he decides to go in a different direction. Now see, I think if you're thinking about God as a personal being, that should be unproblematic. Uh, if, I'm, if, if you and I have a relationship, uh, what you do modifies me. It genuinely impacts me, and what I do genuinely impacts you. And, and so we adjust our, our courses in, in response to one another. But that means that when God had the first mindset that he really didn't know what was going to happen because then, he, then the change of mind would not have Absolutely been real. Right. Uh, if, if, uh, if it's true that God changes his mind, then it can't be also true that God's mind was eternally settled as much as the tradition teaches. And, and uh, I, I think you're absolutely right. That's why I believe that uh, both scripture and good philosophy lead to the conclusion that the future is to some degree open. It consists of possibilities because free will is real. And so as God's interacting with us uh, free agents, uh, God knows that we could possibly make this decision and possibly make that decision. And depending on what we choose, God will respond in a particular way and steer our lives in this direction or in that direction. Now I'm going to make a difficult question for you. And okay. that, is, that is, if you're God, what does it feel like to be subject Mm. to change and to be uh, at the mercy, if you will, of uncertainty in the world. Well, I see here we have to uh, talk about analogy. Um, 
you know, God experiences the world kind of like us. There's an analogy between our experiences and his, but we also need to make adjustments by virtue of the fact that he's God and not uh, just a big human being. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that God uh, ever is worried or anxious the way you and I get worried or anxious about things. Uh, God can anticipate every possibility as though it was an absolute certainty. So I don't think God's up there biting his nails or anything like that. Um, I do think that God uh, uh, grieves uh, over loss and is frustrated when uh, God's trying to get us to go a certain direction and we refuse. And, and all, because those are emotions that are not incompatible with a perfect God. But to be anxious or nervous or, you know, uh, having uh, irrational fears the way uh, we humans do, that is not compatible with being a perfect being. And so I, th I would say that those are not emotions that God has. Mm, a lot of my fears are quite rational. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but they're also predicated on you being a finite human right, being, you know. Sure. Whereas God, I, I don't think God's existence is ever threatened. Uh, I don't think God, you know, can, can be killed. I think God's a necessary being. Can't, so those kind of worries are... can't lose his job. I, I, I don't think... Uh, th there's not any, any close competitors. No <laughs> one's running for that office. Uh, l l let's be a little more theoretical. God created this universe, you believe. Uh, God did a lot of planning, I assume, to create this universe because things seem to work together pretty well. Did the actualization of a real world from all the possibilities that God seemed to know, did that process of actualizing a world change God? Um, it, not in terms of God's essential nature, I don't believe, because it's not like, I, I've got good reasons to think that God's essential nature is what's called necessary. That is to say, it's eternally settled. Uh, God, in terms of God's character, can't be improved and can't be worsened. Um, so in that sense, it didn't change God. But in terms of God's experience, I've got every reason to think that it did change God. Um, God didn't. He, he, God's experiencing something new. Namely, there's a world here. Real world, a not, real a, world. not a possibility. Exactly. And um, uh, that uh, when God creates free agents, when we make decisions, we actualize possibilities that weren't actualized before. And so God experiences that new. And every moment, there's a newness to God's experience. Um, uh, that doesn't affect God's. It doesn't improve God's godness. <laughs> But it does mean his experience is enriched, if you will. Uh, there's always newness that, that God is experiencing. And I don't know why God wouldn't want to experience that. I mean, I, I think that's a positive thing. It, it, it brings a, a, a creativity and a novelty and an adventuresome uh, part to God's project in creation that wouldn't be there if God is just, you know, eternally the same in God's experience of the world, as, as much of the tradition uh, teaches.